It is hard to come by people in Russia who have not been influenced by the works of Kornye Tchaikovsky in their childhood years. His works are reread so often that they are imprinted on the history of the nation. However, Tchaikovsky faced a number of challenges throughout his professional career so he could continue his passion of writing adored fiction. Today we will be giving you an insight of Kornye Tchaikovsky and his works for children. Nikolai Kornye Tchaikov, later known as Kornye Tchaikovsky, was born March 31st in St. Petersburg, Russia. Tchaikovsky was a renowned Russian critic and writer of children's literature. As a child, he began to escape into writing, the fantasies of battles between good and evil characters serving as a reflection of the conflicts raging within his mind. Due to his impoverished upbringing, Gournier studied on his own and he would eventually teach himself English and French. He had to obtain his high school and university diplomas by correspondence, as in his early life he was expelled from school due to his low origin. Tchaikovsky began writing for the Odessa News as a freelance writer. Upon being hired as a journalist in 1901, Nikolai came up with what would be his famous pen name, Kornier Tchaikovsky. He began writing articles, interviewing writers who passed through Odessa, such as Ivan Bunin and Alexander Kuprin. Tchaikovsky unexpectedly received an offer to become a foreign correspondent in London for the Odessa News in 1903 and took the opportunity. Although he taught himself English, Tchaikovsky lacked the opportunity to practice the spoken language and had rather poor pronunciation and grammar. As he was still an inexperienced journalist and instead of working, he spent most of his days in the British Museum Library. He surrounded himself with classic literature such as Dickens and Renard. During his travels to England, in his course of work, Tchaikovsky met Winston Churchill and future British monarch George V. In 1905, Tchaikovsky returned to Russia during the revolution. Very disturbed by the events, he began to publish the satirical magazine, Signal. The Russian Revolution of 1905 was a wave of mass political and social distress that spread throughout the Russian Empire. It paved the way for rising communism and played a pivotal role in convincing Tsar Nicholas II to attempt the transformation of the Russian government from an autocracy into a constitutional monarchy. This included worker strikes, peasant unrest, and military immunities. Tsar Nicholas II enacted constitutional reforms and in part established the state Duma, the multi-party system, and the Russian constitution of 1906. As for Tchaikovsky, he gained recognition as a critic and translator and made connections with many famous poets and writers. When returning to London in 1916 as the representative of the journal Neva, he served as an observer of Britain's attitude to Russia. His works played a critical part in shaping British perception of Russian literature. His experience in London inspired his interest in mass culture, which became his defining attribute as a critic throughout his pre-revolutionary writings. From the 1920s onward, he was a cultural diplomat on behalf of Britain in the USSR and facilitated communication between Western writers and scholars and their Soviet counterparts. Tchaikovsky is considered one of the first writers to start writing for the very young children. His verses brought light to language that emphasized sound patterns rather than national storytelling. His bizarre imagery and verses crafted in a way that held the attention of young readers. His poetry had positive attributes for children, including strengthening their language skills and nurturing creative instincts, particularly with regard to using words in unusual ways and throwing in problem-solving purposes. He was also known among psychologists and linguists for his work from 2 to 5 in 1928 that dealt with children's language and childhood development. Another factor that contributed to his success is him being a father himself, and some of his stories like Crocodile or Confusion and other poems were written for his children. But even with all the good within his writings, Tchaikovsky's work began to catch the eye of the Soviet authorities in a negative light. In the 1930s, the value of Tchaikovsky's verses was the source of a debate, with many critics dismissing its elaborate elements as gibberish that contained strange or surreal ideas. Tchaikovsky's children's stories came under scrutiny by Nadezhda Krupskaya, the wife of the USSR founder Vladimir Lenin. She mocked Tchaikovsky's nursery rhymes and claimed that his format and content did not fully correspond with the ideals of Soviet pedagogy. Tchaikovsky was deeply affected and subsequently could not write for a long time. While Tchaikovsky's works began to become targeted due to underlying backlash within its lines, a very notable work of his that caught the attention of authorities was The Giant Cockroach. 
This is because the Soviet government believed that the main character, the giant cockroach, alluded to Joseph Stalin. The tale depicts a giant red-headed cockroach who overtakes the animal kingdom, referencing Russia, and he intimidates everyone and takes over the power and attacks the smaller animals of the kingdom. In the end, the animals revolt against the cockroach and he is eaten by a sparrow. While Tchaikovsky never validated if the cockroach was really depicting Stalin, it was implied. Tchaikovsky did not accept many things in Soviet society. He was the only Soviet writer to congratulate Boris Pasternak when he was awarded the Nobel Prize. Pasternak received backlash for his novel, Dr. Shvago, which was banned by Soviet authorities. Tchaikovsky also made efforts to defend the poet Joseph Brodsky, who was put on trial for parasitism. Due to this, Tchaikovsky had to face many attacks by critics and party officials. He also kept in his archives manuscripts and writers whose work was suppressed during the Soviet era. Later in life, out of society's spotlight, Tchaikovsky worked on the retelling of the Bible for children. Due to a standing conflict with Russia's anti-religious ideology, it became difficult and things never fully went underway. His first print of the text, Tower of Babel, was destroyed by the authorities. From 1938 onward, Tchaikovsky spent more time in his writer's colony near Moscow. Tchaikovsky, a loved figure by many children, was also seen as a force of anti-government indoctrination. Tchaikovsky's lifelong studies in the field of theory of translation comprises a volume, The Art of Translation, on which he worked from 1919 until its publication in 1964. Rudyard Kipling's The Jungle Book and Just So Stories went through hundreds of editions. His translations, both of Mark Twain's works, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, and The Prince and the Pauper were bestsellers. In the meantime, his lifetime work of Nekrasov, Mastery of Nekrasov, was awarded with the Lenin Prize. His book, Live as Life, advocated for the preservation of lively, vibrant Russian language. Given his reputation in the Soviet Union, Western literary scholars recognized Tchaikovsky's role in the wider British public's reception of Russian literature. In 1962, Tchaikovsky received an honorary doctorate in letters from Oxford University. Even with all the backlash and hate that he received in the past, Tchaikovsky's legacy lives on through his works and translations that still reach the top of the bestsellers list, and through the memory of the Russian people who retell his stories. Thank you, and I hope you enjoyed our presentation.